The movie opens up at Stratford University, where we are introduced to the main character, Daryl Witherspoon. Daryl is a helpful guy, and he's assisting a group of students on a university tour. But, to everyone's surprise, while giving the tour, he's also working as a mailman, doing two jobs at once. Daryl takes the students around the university, and all the while he's completing his mailman duties. After finishing one tour, he immediately starts another with a new group of students. In the next scene, we see Daryl in his room, taking a nap with the TV playing in the background. Right then, his mom calls, abruptly waking him up. She inquires about his job prospects, and Daryl tells her that he's the top contender for a great job. However, in reality, he is badly struggling with finances. After some time, the university's tuition office calls him, asking about his semester fee payment. But since Daryl doesn't have any money to pay, he pretends to be someone else and claims that Daryl got killed. Later, a desperate Daryl gets creative and tries various ways to earn extra cash. He goes to a blood bank and donates a lot of blood, but ends up passing out. He then goes to a sperm bank to donate sperm, but that also leaves him exhausted. Moving on, Daryl's determination to make money leads him to a hair braiding salon, where he wants to donate his hair. But since he has short hair, he wants to donate something else from his lower body. As expected, this enrages the owner, and he is promptly kicked out. Well, no pube transplants for you. The next day, at the university cafeteria, Daryl is approached by his classmate Scott. The latter is also a candidate for the job Daryl is applied to, and both appear to be rivals. They make fun of each other, and explain why they are better suited for the job. Meanwhile, a beautiful girl named Janice enters the cafeteria, and Daryl is instantly captivated by her looks. Later, at class, a representative from Smythe-based Corporation comes as a guest lecturer to talk about the job they're offering. He explains the qualifications required for the job, emphasizing the importance of being active in sports and social activities. He also mentions that the the winner will be selected from the five finalists. Unfortunately, Scott seems to have all the qualifications required for the prestigious job, which worries Daryl. However, he doesn't give up and decides to showcase his athleticism by playing ice hockey. Daryl approaches his coach even though he has never played hockey before. The coach initially says no, but Daryl is determined to prove himself. He then turns to his roommate Tim, who is the hockey team captain, and asks for his help in convincing the coach. Eventually, Daryl gets a chance to play as a stopper, but he struggles and gets hit by the puck multiple times failing to save any goals. Classic comedy scene. I wonder if he also farted. One day, while cleaning the campus, Daryl discovers a pamphlet about a neuropsychology seminar that promises to pay participants. Seeing an opportunity to earn some extra dough, he attends the seminar. There, they talk about a new drug that can heighten human senses to a whole new level. However, as they explain the side effects, many students start leaving the workshop, and Daryl falls asleep. After the presentation, Daryl finds himself alone in the room, and unbeknownst to the side effects of the drug, he agrees to take the test just for the sake of earning some skrill. Daryl then meets Dr. Thomas Whedon, who explains that he needs to inject six dosages of the drug into his buttocks every night before bedtime. Dr. Whedon also warns Daryl about possible disorientation and side effects he might experience in the initial usage of the drug. Later in the evening, Daryl attends a fraternity party with the hope of making new friends. There, he comes across Janice once again, and gathers the courage to ask her out. Surprisingly, she agrees to go out with him, which makes Daryl happy. However, his joy is short-lived when Scott arrives there and insults him in front of everyone. Feeling hurt and left out, Daryl decides to leave the party. Once he reaches home, he decides to take the first dosage of the drug as suggested by the doctor. Let me just stick this in my eyes real quick. The following day, during an exam in Professor Engel's class, Daryl starts experiencing the drug's side effects in an intense way. His senses have become extra sensitive, as the ordinary sounds, like pencils writing, or watches ticking start to bother him. Even the lights reflecting off a classmate's diamond necklace unsettle him. After a while, Daryl becomes visibly uncomfortable, and his facial expressions and body language change drastically. When the professor asks him to stop, Daryl feels even more frustrated and goes straight to Dr. Whedon's office with complaints. Fortunately, the latter reassures him that the drug is working as intended, and the discomfort he's experiencing is just a part of the experiment. The doctor then advises Daryl to exercise his senses to gain control over them and live a normal life. Taking this advice to heart, Daryl tries very hard and eventually manages to take control of his senses. He actually develops heightened senses, giving him a kind of superpower. As Daryl continues his daily routine, he works as a kitchen staff for the university's program, trying to make ends meet. Meanwhile, the Smythe-based corporation is celebrating with their finalists for the job competition. Even though Daryl didn't make it to the finals, he uses his new superpower of senses to impress the panelists. This unexpected display of Daryl's abilities persuades the panelists to make him the sixth finalist for the job competition. <laughs> Why didn't you just tell us you were taking steroids? Nice. Later that night, while
while celebrating his success of selection, Daryl sees Janice entering a restroom with her friend. Using his super hearing, he eavesdrops on their conversation and learns that Janice is looking for a guy who is intelligent, caring, and smart. Also, probably looks like Chris Hemsworth and has $3 million a year. Encouraged by this knowledge, Daryl decides to take his chance and approaches Janice as soon as she walks out of the restroom. Using his sense of smell, he gets closer to her and exactly guesses the perfume she has been wearing. How does super smell give you knowledge of perfume brands, you might wonder? Well, I don't know. This impresses Janice, and she asks if he would like to have dinner with her. She even kisses him on the cheeks, making him blush. The next day, Tim spots Daryl using injections on his buttocks and deduces that he has become addicted to drugs. Later in college, Daryl impresses the hockey coach with his skillful skating and even saves a puck flying towards them, preventing an accident. As a result, he is allowed to join the team. Taking full advantage of this opportunity, Derek excels in the game, saving every goal. Even Scott is left in awe of his performance. The scene then shifts to an inter-college ice hockey match, and the commentators mention that Stratford University has a terrible history with the game, but this time, they have no idea that Daryl is playing as the goalie. His team takes an early lead, and he manages to stop virtually everything thrown at him. In the end, Stratford wins a game for the first time ever, and everyone celebrates the success. Next, Daryl goes for an interview at the Smythe-based corporation office. Using his superpower, he listens to the questions being asked in the interview. Daryl then fills in the information that other interviewees had missed earlier during his own interview. With this, he impresses Randall Tyson, one of the board members who wants Daryl to impress Arlo Vickers, a potential client of their company. Our boy agrees to do this right away. Tyson then informs Daryl that the final decision will be made within five days. That night, Daryl invites Janice for dinner and cooks delicious meals for her. Later, the duo enjoys the food and each other's company. During the conversation, Daryl impresses Janice by dedicating beautiful and romantic lines for her from a poem that his roommate Tim is reading in the other room. Surprisingly, this excites her so much that she kisses him. They then end up having intercourse, but Daryl ejaculates prematurely, a problem that disappoints Janice and prompts her to leave. The next day, Daryl surprises his family by bringing Janice along and introducing her to everyone. His mother praises his friendly behavior to Janice, while Daryl talks with his siblings. Before leaving, Daryl gives some money to his mother to help her with household expenses, making her emotional. Back in the dorm, Tim finds Daryl using the drug again and becomes concerned about him. This time, he inquires about it to Daryl, and the latter tries to explain the positive results he's experiencing. However, Tim does not believe in him and assumes that Daryl has become addicted to drugs. Desperate to prove that he is not an addict and that it has only positive results, Daryl takes a double dose of the drug. Now he'll ejaculate without even touching his belt. The next day, because of the overdose, he wakes up feeling numb in his arms and legs, making it difficult for him to walk. Seeing his friend in such a condition, Tim immediately calls a drug support group for help. Meanwhile, Daryl somehow manages to reach Dr. Whedon's clinic and tells him about exceeding the dosage. The doctor explains that the double dose has caused a serotonin boost, desensitizing his receptors. He then mentions that now only four of his senses can work at a time, constantly switching the fifth one. This means, at any given point, he will either be blind or deaf or mute and so on. Dr. Whedon explains that the only solution to this problem is to wait for the drug to leave his system. By his calculation, it will take three days. So until then, Daryl will have to stay in bed. However, the latter cannot waste even a single day, as he has a final competition coming up for the job. The scene shifts to a basketball match where Daryl sits with the board member Tyson. Soon, the special guest, Vickers, also arrives to inspect. Daryl's main task is to impress him with his skills. However, just after a few moments, he starts feeling uncomfortable. His senses play tricks on him. He mistakes takes people standing up for the national anthem as an opportunity to get beers. His eyes get blurry, and he even talks to himself. Vickers finds this amusing and laughs at Daryl's odd behavior. Though his eyesight returns after a while, Daryl's troubles are far from over. During the game, a player throws him to the court for insulting him, and the meeting with Vickers doesn't go as planned. But despite the situation, Tyson informs Daryl that they are good, as they still have a chance to woo Vickers. Later at night, in the dorm, Tim sees a girl, Lorraine, entering their room and rushes to inform the drug support group thinking it's another potential problem with Daryl's medicine usage. Lorraine, who is actually Janice's sister, flirts with Daryl, but his senses are still off and he can't hear her properly. Just as his hearing returns, Lorraine starts to kiss him, but Daryl can't feel anything due to the numbing effect of the drug. When he fails to perform, Lorraine gets disappointed and leaves. Unfortunately, at the same time, Janice arrives there and notices her sister. She then enters Daryl's room and finds him in an awkward position, lying naked on the floor. This makes Janice upset, and she walks away, but not before kicking Daryl's 
eggplant. Soon, the support group arrives, but when they enter Daryl's room, they find that he has already passed out. They consider giving him an epinephrine shot, thinking he has overdosed, but luckily, he wakes up just before they can administer it. Following this, Tim confronts him about the medicine, and Daryl finally explains the truth, saying he only wanted to earn some extra cash. The following morning, Daryl goes to play the ice hockey match for his college, and everyone hopes that he can win it for them, like before. Unfortunately, his sensory condition derails the game, and Daryl cannot save even a single shot. As a result, Stratford ends up losing by a huge margin. In the next scene, Daryl goes to a pub to find Tim, and asks for his help in preparing for the final job interview. To his good luck, Tim agrees to assist him. Meanwhile, Scott's dad arranges for experienced advisors to support him in answering interview questions. Despite his health condition getting worse, Daryl remains determined and focuses on studying hard to get ready for the interviews. On the day of the interview, Daryl steps out of his car, but his eyes become blurry, making it hard for him to see. He asks a homeless man for directions to the Smythe-based corporation office. Unfortunately, the man takes advantage of Daryl's vulnerability and leads him to a corner of the road, where he beats him up and robs him of all his clothes, leaving him naked. Daryl somehow manages to hide his private part with a trash can lid and reaches a store to get new clothes. Unfortunately, upon arriving at the office, he realizes that the dress he has selected is inappropriate for the interview. At the same time, the drug starts showing its effects, causing him to urinate in his pants. However, after urinating, Daryl realizes that the drug has finally left his system, and he is totally back to normal. He then enters the competition room, defending his attire by saying that he is allergic to formal clothing. Soon, the final round of interviews begins, and Daryl and Scott end up competing against each other. When faced with a tiebreaker question from Professor Engel, Scott fumbles with his response, but Daryl comes up with a brilliant answer. This impresses Tyson, and he offers Daryl the job. However, our boy feels guilty about cheating with the drug, so he comes clean about his actions on stage. Despite the shocking revelation, Tyson respects his honesty and offers him a junior level job at the company. Fast forward to a year later, we see Daryl as a junior analyst, entering the Smythe-based corporation building to start his dream job. The movie ends with a heartwarming scene, revealing that Daryl and Janice have gotten married and are moving into a new house with their family. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.